start a little bit with this history because here understanding is coming up. Uh, first of all, I think we have in Western and uh, Central Europe two main rivers, River Rhine and River Danube. The River Rhine, by history, uh, was uh, a division line and a battle line between France and Germany. I think the Germans tried to come on the other side and uh, the French uh, tried to come on the one side. Uh, and so on and so on. And by this experience, European integration was created. I think that's extremely important because I learned it's not possible to have both sides and it's better to cooperate. Uh, I think this is a very uh, important experience, uh, that's for sure. And the results are excellent because the Rhine area, uh, by shipping, the capacity is used 80 to 90%. Uh, the industrial capacity around the River Rhine on both sides is really outstanding. Uh, you have a mutual cultural understanding. There's a function, uh, functioning uh, regional policy, uh, in regional policy, and so on and so on. And may I say, from my feeling, it was really the driving force for European integration. What's the matter with the River Danube? That's also an interesting historical uh, story here. Uh, because the River Danube was also a battlefield in a certain way, quite uh, different. I think the main part of the River Danube uh, was within the so-called Danube monarchy, uh, but I think not uh, totally. And uh, a lot of efforts politically started, uh, who is in command of the River Danube? Uh, by, the, uh, by some defeats of the Ottoman Empire, uh, I think the first international Danube commission was established. I think the Austrians are not aware about this. It was based in Constanza, and you won't believe it, the driving force were the French and the British. Uh, I think why? Because it was fighting against the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, yeah? and inst being instead of the Ottoman Empire. But there's a long story here in the real. Uh, so far, I think, may I say, a regional policy in the Austro-Hungarian monarchy for the Danube was not really existing. There was one instrument uh, which we learned as we were uh, children, the Donaldabschifatsgesellschaft. Mm -hmm. uh, the shipping company along the river Danube had some importance uh, in, in a kind of regional cooperation and so on and so on. It's not anymore existing. It's only uh, a memory, which is a pity, but it's uh, not to discuss here. Uh, so far, after the First World War, downfall of the monarchy, the Daniel Commission was established. Uh, it's still existing in uh, Budapest. Uh, I want to bring to you my memory again the French and the British, and for sure the Soviet Union were members here. The Soviet Union was justified by, uh, in this time, Ukraine was uh, a part of the Soviet Union, and so on and so on. And may I say, I grew up as a child with ships along the river Daniel in Vienna with the Soviet flag. I think uh, that was uh, reality. That was reality, and it was used for shipping. By the downfall of Yugoslavia, uh, the shipping capacity of the River Danube uh, went down to 7 to 10 percent of the capacity of the river. I think it's nearly finished. I think you have some uh, boats owned by families. Uh, I think the majority are Dutch. Uh, they are doing some transport and so on and so on. With one exception. I think in the time before the downfall of, the, of Yugoslavia, tourist ships were around 25 going on the river Danube. For the moment, it is 135. 135. It is a real big advantage because the Europeans are eager to go along the river Danube because it's new and they can go to the Danube Delta and the Black Sea uh, and so on. One part uh, of the history of the river Danube. Uh, they have changed the Daniel Commission, and I think now uh, all the riparian states are in, and uh, Russia, out of specific reasons. Um, 
we have some international agreements, but the Danube Commission is only in charge seen from the perspective of international law, not seen from the perspective of regional policy or cohesion policy. It's not their job. Uh, I think in Austria, the foreign ministry, or now it's named the European uh, Ministry for European and uh, International uh, Affairs, uh, is in charge of this. Uh, I think with no capacity because we have to do the international job, uh, but not the cohesion policy along the river there. So far, I, I was for seven years in charge of the stability pact for South East Europe. Uh, that happened uh, in some steps after the Dayton Agreement and the Kosovo War. Uh, and uh, my predecessor, Bodo Hombach, a German, had the idea to ask the Austrian and the Romanian government to do something uh, concerning the River Danube, and the Danube Regional Initiative was created. Uh, I think uh, in charge were uh, Romania, Austria, the Stability Pact in this time, uh, and the European Commission. What did we do? Every two years, nice ministerial meetings uh, with uh, some uh, resolutions and so on and so on. Uh, we met uh, up after two years always, and then we read the uh, resolution from the last time, and nothing was done, it was quite the same, and then we decided to do it again, nothing happened. I think to say it quite clearly, it's one of the things where I may say it was not the success story of the stability back, also not my as the success story, we failed totally. We had one side effect, it has to be mentioned, uh, under the auspices of cohesion policy, we created the Sava River Basin Agreement. This is an agreement uh, of uh, Slovenia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, and Serbia uh, concerning the River Sava. And may I say it's a kind of a training camp. Uh, we have a secretariat in, in Zagreb. As far as they have money, I repeat, as far mm -hmm. as they have money, I think they are improving. And it, it's quite a working uh, cooperation. It's of great importance but it will make no sense if the Danube is not following here. So far, in the last time, we have some positive movements on the subject. I may say I was always very skeptical on the subject. Uh, since a shorter time, I am optimistic in a certain limits. Uh, things are really moving in the right direction. Some formal things, beg your pardon, for always being a little bit politically, but uh, the question is based politically. It was possible under the Czech EU presidency uh, to get the decision by the European Council to build up uh, the Danube uh, regional cooperation. Um, I think there were, it was prepared by the Polish uh, Commissioner Danuta Hübner. She did an excellent job, and hopefully it's an advantage that now the Austrian Commission is in charge of it, uh, <laughs> uh, because he should have some knowledge about the River Danube because politically he was based in Vienna. Uh, so far, no, it's a little bit uh, cynical remark. I know he's very much interested, I think, to move the things here before. Uh, what was decided under the JTU presidency that there should be uh, developed a program and a cooperation, which was done. I think it was a very interesting pro uh, process. We had a lot of meetings starting from Ulm uh, through Linz, uh, through Vienna Bratislava. Budapest, Ruse, Constanza, and so on and so on. Uh, I think some were saying too many meetings. I may say it was quite good because a lot of NGOs, initiatives, and so on and so on were here really involved. And the local authorities. Also, looking back to history, even at the time before the downfall of the Iron Curtain, there was a cooperation of uh, the regions uh, along the River Danube. Uh, in, in our part. That was Vienna, Lower Austria, Upper Austria, Southern uh, in Moravia, Western Slovakia, uh, some Hungarian Komitat, uh, as we are naming it, uh, and I think they trained in a certain way. It happened not too much, but it was even possible by two different political systems to say, okay, we have different political systems, but we need some cooperation in favor of the citizens living there, uh, and so on and so on. So far, there is a certain kind of preparedness now in existing. Uh, where we are standing now formally, I think the European Commission collecting all these ideas 
developed a paper on this subject. Uh, it is distributed, it is under scrutiny. Uh, we will get comments, the member states are commenting, and, and, and. And under the Hungarian presidency in the first half of 2011, it will be decided. And then the work has to start. Uh, I think there is one principle which might be interested. I'm not quite sure whether will it work or whether it will not work. Uh, I think they want to distribute the responsibility for different fields uh, to the member states along the river Danube. For example, the Austrians were running for shipping, which I'm not understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, the other possibility, I will explain then why. Uh, the other possibility might be security and so, and uh, it's also economy and ecological matters. Uh, and so on, uh, and, and so on. And here we are coming closer to the uh, real problems, and I will tell you also some uh, nice stories and anecdotes, uh, but the, the best reality check you can uh, do in reality. Uh, so far I want to touch the problem along the river there. First of all, European cohesion policy. That's necessary that the national governments, uh, member states of the European Union and other are cooperating. May I say it's not an easy job. I had tremendous problems to convince the German government that the Danube is important. I can you tell why? The German government is based in Berlin and they have one important river, the Spree, and not the Danube. Uh, and this is, I think, uh, mirroring the tensions even between Germany because in Berlin, they are saying, ah, these southerners, these Bavarians in Baden-Württemberg, they say, will do it. Next problem, the Baden-Württembergers are convinced uh, that they are re the real owners uh, of the Danube, because the Danube is starting there. And the Bavarians are convinced that we are the real owners of the Danube, because the Danube is broader, you can ship there, and, and so on and so on. Uh, so far, I think that's very interesting. I think it was a, a tough job, which I had to do to convince uh, First of all, Berlin, and second, the two provincial governments of the two Bundesländer to cooperate with this subject. I think you have this internal rivalry about domination, which is not only in Germany, I don't want to blame the Germans, uh, it is also uh, a certain uh, problem. Uh, I think may I touch the next problem? I think it is by great majority, uh, the riparian countries are EU member states, which is excellent. Uh, I think, uh, and if the Serbs might be right soon a candidate country, because the treatment of a candidate country of the European Union is quite close to a member state in such, such questions, I think it is really excellent. And here they say, not while the Serbian friends are here, what the Serbians are doing is an excellent job. They were one of the best cooperating on this subject. They had all these ideas, we are pressing for, and so on and so on. Um, I think uh, that's extremely good. Uh, on the other side, we have sometimes problems. Uh, for example, the next problems uh, politically are starting between Hungary and Slovakia. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing to do with the river Danube. It has to do a lot between Hungarian minority, uh, the Treaty of Trianon, and so on and so on. And I think there are here are a lot of tensions. With the hope of the European Commission, and as a neighboring country, I may say with our hope, that the Danube is an instrument to come closer. I think here you can see cohesion policy is a real possibility because they have to settle their problems in common. Let's speak about problems also. I'm starting. Deepening of the river Danube for shipping is one of the main problems, and it is not easy uh, because. Uh, well, wildlife fund and then the end, uh, they are all fighting these exercises of deepening. The problem is starting in Straubing. Uh, uh, I think it is uh, here. Yeah. Straubing, yeah. here. Um, that's the first problem. We Austrians have a problem which is for Austrians very famous with the name Heimburg. Um, here also, with some difficulties politically. That's a reason why I'm skeptical. If we are fighting for shipping, then we'll get a newspaper, a small newspaper with a high number of prints, Kronenzeitung against us, because this is a clutch of subject uh, here in Austria. We have some problems between the Austrians and Slovaks, because we Austrians sending, not having solved the Hamburg problem, a lot of stones and sand in the direction of Kapchikovo. 
that Kapchikovo might be filled up, uh, it's a power station. Next problem. There was an international treaty in 1977 between, in this time, Czechoslovakia and Hungary building up Kapchikovo Nozhmarsh. Nozhmarsh was not built because it's on the other side of uh, Vizerat. Vizerat is a famous place for the Hungarians because King Matthias Corvinus they had his palace there and so on and so on. And it's also a beautiful landscape so far. I think uh, uh, power stations there might be a problem. The protest against this power station created the democratic movement uh, in Hungary. And so the Hungarians are saying, this moved us to democracy, and you are forcing us uh, to do another power station. I have a certain understanding that this, uh, it's not my job, I think, to judge the, the things in this direction. But this is one of the tensions. How to come out of an international treaty? So far, Slovak friends are saying the Hungarians shall pay for it. The Hungarians saying we don't pay for the fact that we have democracy like this. I think here you can see. Uh, and it has not yet started. A little bit in the background, how can we come around? Uh, because we have to overcome this uh, problem. I think there are some problems left between Croatia and Serbia. Uh, because Eastern Slavonia was uh, one of the battlefields uh, of the Boers in the time of the downfall uh, of Yugoslavia. Uh, on the other side, it's extremely important that areas like Vukovar and so on and so on getting some improvement. Uh, I think it has a great importance also. Uh, also, the other national parks there and so on, a long list of problems. Uh, for the Serbs and for Belgrade, for Novi Sad, this is extremely important for improvement of the economic development. I think uh, I have a full understanding here and uh, hopefully it works in the right direction. Coming to the next problems, uh, I think we have some problems around uh, the Iron Gate. Uh, here, my nature and so on and so on. Uh, I don't want to go into depths. And then we have the interesting situation that the River Danube is a border. A border between Romania and Bulgaria. Here I may say, for 470 kilometers along this border in the Danube, we have one bridge. I repeat, 470 kilometers, one bridge. What is the title of my speech? European cohesion policy. I think here you can see what the chart of this Danube uh, regional initiative for uh, cooperation has to be. We are working uh, on a second bridge meeting Calafat. I started the Southeast European Cooperative Initiative in 96. We signed an agreement between Romania and Bulgaria that a bridge will be immediately built. And we have now 2010. I think something is under construction. I think it's quite a time. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be quite soon, 15 years, that it is not existing. It is, uh, but for sure, necessary. And there are a lot of discussions uh, to build a third Daniel Bridge, which is quite necessary. Uh, I think here coming uh, to the closer to, to, to Bucharest, here I think it has a great importance. Uh, the problems are not finishing. Uh, I'm not sure that you are all aware that Moldova is a Danube country uh, because they have the lengthy uh, border here of I think 600 meters. Uh, these 600 meters have a great importance because you can build a port and it is a possibility for Moldova, a poor country, to go to the Black Sea. And they have there a refinery uh, now. They got some additional 300 meters from the Ukrainians and need to have more possibilities in exchange of some border changes which are not yet done and so on and so on. But here the problem's not finished. Uh, we all have the feeling uh, that uh, the River Danube in, in, in three parts is within Romania. No, there's a fourth one which is not shown here in Ukraine. And there's a battle between Ukraine and Romania. Is it allowed? Is it not allowed? And so on and so on. And all the Völker Freundschaft would have said the friendship between peoples is here coming out uh, with some tensions, nothing to do with the River Danube. I think there are quite uh, other things uh, here in the background. May I say, I mentioned all this problem because this is a real background for cohesion policy in the European way. And how can it happen? I think to do projects. And here the Commissioner Hahn is looking in the right way. Uh, I think he told me that only 4 to 5% of the cohesion money, of the regional 
uh, money for regional policy is going in cross-border projects. Yeah. Only. Yeah. Only. And I think this is a real chance to bring the countries together. Uh, yeah. I think it is extremely important that we are developing projects and that we are developing cooperation. Uh, may I say a request uh, here to the university and uh, to your partners, I think look to some projects, defined projects, which we are doing together, because there might in the competition, if we are bringing up the projects in the direction to, uh, to the Director General, uh, we might have a chance to get it. It's extremely important. We have the instrument that was founded, I don't know if Romanians are here, uh, under Constantinescu, later President of, of Romania, the Daniel Breakfast Conference. I think this is a great chance. The chair of the Daniel Breakfast Conference is the rector of Novisat. Uh, so far, I think uh, you have somebody who is responsible for it. Uh, we are trying also to push in this direction uh, because some research projects some developing and so on and so on are really possible because we have a lot of technical questions. What are the technical questions? How is, for example, shipping done on the river there? There's the idea about uh, to use catamarans. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have one strong argument, ecological arguments, CO2, because the transport on the river Danube, uh, seen from the climate, uh, is, I think, the better one. And it should be done in the best way possible in, in, in this direction. A lot of goods can go because if it is not so under time pressure, uh, you can use the river tenure. Again, I repeat, the capacity is not yet used. And it was uh, rightly mentioned, I think we have to enlarge the capacities of the ports, uh, we have to enlarge, uh, or we have to build up a river information system, which is only partly done. Uh, we have to look to these deepening questions quite not an easy job, and, and, and. I think there are a lot of possibilities existing uh, where more is uh, really possible. And please don't forget, I think the Danube is connected with the River Rhine, but the Rhine Mine Danube uh, channel. I think there, there's some background here, which is not yet used uh, in reality. Uh, there are also some critiques on this, uh, but I think it has to be mentioned because uh, it's quite an important part. I was speaking about ship shipping. I think the ecological matters, water management, are of extreme importance. The water quality of the River Danube, leaving Austria, I think is, if I'm rightly informed, two uh, around this. And uh, sometimes the water in the River Danube is arriving in the Black Sea between four and five. Uh, hopefully it's better, that was the last figures I heard. Uh, and I think if it is going on, then you can wait for the date when the Brexit will be dead. I think this is a real challenge. What's the challenge? I think uh, industry, but uh, it was rightly mentioned, the uh, whole industry is going down. You can forget them step by step as a problem. Uh, the second one is uh, the missing of uh, sewing station and so on and so on for the villages, cities and so. It's an interesting investment. Let's see it from the positive side here. Uh, what's possible, and uh, the third problem of fertilizers. Uh, here we have to change the agricultural policy here uh, to modernize it. To, that's an extreme challenge, which is lasting very long. I was said by experts. I'm not an expert on the subject, but for sure uh, it is uh, possible. Here you can see the next challenge. Uh, and for sure, a lot of business is possible along, and uh, it was rightly shown about uh, the situation here, uh, migration, uh, losing population, and so on and so on. I think that might be chances uh, to get a real development. I think you might have the feeling I was speaking about a lot of negative things, uh, problems, and so on. We have a certain backing about which we are not really aware. On one level, the Danube region is a real community and you won't believe it in culture. I think the Danube Balls is not only mythology. I think there is some background uh, on this and uh, the cultural life along the Danube, and I have a lot to do with this, uh, is quite running very well. That's giving a certain kind of hope. I think because there is a feeling being together, and I think this has to be supported uh, for sure uh, in the right way. Uh, 
it was also raised the question about institutional setting. Uh, the decisions on the European level were no new institutions, no fresh money. I share this opinion because concerning regional policy and the money of regional policy, I think we have very often some difficulties to use it. Uh, you remember not only in Romania and Bulgaria, as we started in Austria, there was money left and we were not really able to spend it. I think much better and uh, I think we learned a lot. That will be one of the main campaigning necessary to learn how it is uh, really done. Uh, and so far we have to look in this direction. And it is a real chance, and I'm a little bit a fan of, of, of regional decentralization, to get a closer cooperation of the regions. I think here in MSA I'm extremely critical sometimes on the Austrian political situation, but here I learned that the cooperation on the River Danube concerning program uh, between Vienna, Lower Austria and uh, Upper Austria is quite a good one. Uh, there's an excellent paper existing, I think it can nothing add. Uh, it's going in the right direction and hopefully the instrumentalization, instrumentalization is also done. But we have to enlarge it because we need uh, the closer cooperation with the Bratislava region, for example. Uh, that's also very important to start it and so sometimes we have difficulties uh, concerning airports and uh, something like that. Forget it, uh, that's not a key question. Um, and so I think in this direction we have to move and it is a real chance for us all in, in a, a European context. So you might understand why I'm in limits optimistic if we are moving in the right direction and if we are taking the different subjects and trying to realize it. Uh, my request would be we should not wait for the national governments because they are involved in a lot of other things let us do with the IO crisis or whatever. I think here we need the regional cooperation of the regional entities. I think that has to create a, it is a sense of regional policy uh, that it is done on this level. Uh, we have a certain tendency, maybe in your countries, if you are not from Austria, it's better. We Austrians have always the tendency to be, we are waiting, what are they doing? Hmm? The real question is what are we doing uh, with the possibilities here we have. And the River Danube is a tremendous chance, I think, to, to change the attitude, to change the approach, uh, the, the approach uh, to realize here. Projects have to be defined. I'm not sure that a big master plan is necessary and then we can act. I think we should define projects uh, which you can handle, uh, I think, which have a chance of realization. Because the commissioner is totally aware of the fact that he needs weeks of test studies. That might be a chance. If he has no quick success study, uh, I think maybe he will be not re-elected or something like that. That's not the theme. Uh, if there's no quick success story around, everybody would say, okay, again, this year nothing is moving and so on and so on. Uh, I think that might be a driving force in the right direction. And what uh, seems to be an optimistic outcome until now is that we have a comparatively broad involvement of a lot of institutions on the different levels. I think uh, the steering of this will be a problem uh, at how to coordinate, but it should be a very public process and I'm quite optimistic that this is moving. May I say you contributed to this process with this event. Thank you very much.